Moving on to podcasting. Fantastic. So Jane, Julia and Nikki. Do you want me to share the um, the presentation or do you? No, I've got it here ready, so hopefully I can share. And I, and I only found out yesterday about the audio because I couldn't work out why my audio wasn't working via Teams. So that's one thing I've learnt from this already. Just bear with me. Oh, I'm loading something else. That's it, Julia. Yeah, but I've not clicked the audio box. I didn't, you didn't <laughs> box, so I'll just try again. <laughs> Having just said that. It's just taking a little bit of time. I'll start again. Right, include system audio there if I tick that box. You should be able to see it soon. Can you see that now? Yeah, all good. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, good afternoon and welcome to our short presentation about how we created a podcast. Julia, Nikki, and I are lecturers in the children's nursing team here at UCLAN. And we have over 60 years collective, that sounds a lot, 60 years collective experience in clinical practice as children's nurses. Um, our little journey begins back in March, like when so many others in higher education, uh, we were thrown into the unknown territory of online learning. As a small module team, we had to put our creative heads together and develop online content which was not only stimulating for our students, but also had the flexibility and inclusivity to support asynchronous learning. Reflecting on some of our early feedback from our students, whilst they thought the online content was good, they said they missed being in class and hearing our experiences, which often allowed them to apply the theory to practice. One afternoon, the three of us were discussing a particular topic on Teams and trying to think of a creative way of presenting it to our students. My husband, who's also working from home, um, he works in media production, overheard our conversation and said, why don't you record yourself discussing this and I will edit it into a podcast for you. And so the plan began. Julia. <laughs> so whilst we've come up with this um, idea, or we've had this idea planted about creating a podcast, we do know there's um, ped pedagogical literature out there to support it, which is, um, I won't go into too much depth, obviously in 10 minutes, but um, generally outlines how flexible and accessible podcasts are and um, how the human voice and that, that, that narrative and um, the stories that storytelling kind of reflects um, that inspiring, engaging lecture and seminars that our students were missing. So practically, how did we do it? We decided to use Teams which was really useful because we could see each other as we were talking and we could signal to each other to like raise a hand or stop or encourage each other with points that we were making if we thought they were good. Obviously no rude gestures, we were very polite to each other um, and we also um, then took the audio of that and, and as Jane said her husband developed it into a podcast for us. So before we started though we did decide that we would have some kind of um, we would have somebody leading the podcast to facilitate it, really to just keep it moving forward and making sure that um, there was a bit of structure, not too much structure because it did need to flow, but that there was some kind of focus to it. So we thought about um, having some questions prior to starting the podcast. So we formulated some questions 
and we all had sight of these and that allowed us to kind of think of examples from clinical practice which is is what often brings um the classroom alive in nursing and um, so we thought of examples that we could use and also maybe link this to evidence to help our students out as well so my initial concerns with the podcast were would it would it last long enough um, would we go off on a tangent um, or would it be really disjointed and, and awkward um, so i thought initially if we get about 20 or 30 minutes this would be really good and useful for the students however we started and after a few false starts from myself an hour later we were still talking and had brought the first podcast to a close so i was no the, those worries about not having enough material were a bit unfounded and after editing um we all the buts as uh, ifs you do become very conscious of, of of what you say and how you present once you've done a podcast realize we all have these little things that we all do and um, we split we had about 50 minutes material from the first podcast so we split this into two sections just for ease of listening for our students in a kind of a natural break that had happened during the podcast um, and and uploaded this to our virtual platform however um i need no worries about the flow or the content either um or initially about it being disjointed because it did flow really well and I think this happened probably for several reasons. I think teams really helped because we could see each other, as I, as I said before. And also the questions and the topics allowed us to kind of naturally to, to have all that content ready in order to discuss it. Although obviously we did, it, they were just guidance initially. Um, and, and very often actually I didn't use the questions because the conversation did naturally just evolve and move through. However, I think one of the other things that really helped was that we do have quite a close working relationship um, and that we're, we're not just colleagues, but friends. So there was a kind of a good rapport and an ease of talking between all three of us because um, we weren't obviously conscious or worried about uh, what others were saying. Um, and I think that really helped, again, just to have this natural conversation throughout the podcast. And having said that, I'm going to hand over to my lovely colleague, Nikki. Hello, everybody. Um, so we just want to start by giving you a little soundbite of, of what the podcast sounded like. So I'll let Julia play that now. Hope this works. <laughs> Welcome to this second podcast for NU237, 7 and NU4378. We're really glad that you enjoyed the last one, hence we're doing another one. Today we're going to be talking about mental health. Okay, so that was a tiny little snippet into um, what the podcast sounded like. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the feedback um, and as you can see from the comments on the screen um, it went down really well. I think the students like the flexibility of a podcast. Um, they can listen to it on the go, in the car. I, I remember as a student listening to podcasts in the car actually on the way to university, on a walk, in bed. Um, and they liked that they didn't have to sit at their computers. And I think we're all very um, aware, aren't we, at the moment of being slaves to our PCs. Um, they also liked the element um, of listening to our experiences. I know Jane and Julia both um, alluded to that in, in, in what they were saying. And I think that's because it gave them the feeling of being back in the classroom. Um, and I think that was an important feature of, of the podcast. Um, so as you have uh, just heard, we did two, we've did we done two podcasts so far. So the first one was just the three of us. But the second podcast that we did, we invited another member of the team in. And that was because of her experience um, in the topic that we were discussing. 
that then gave us the idea of having guest speakers going forward. Um, so obviously we are going to embed podcasts, fingers crossed, into the curriculum as a permanent feature. Um, we just need to sort out the technical element, actually, Emma, um, which might be helpful. <laughs> And it might be where you come in and I can see you smiling now because I've just sprung that on you. Um, so yeah, that, that's um, a little bit about the feedback. Feedback, it offers a fresh approach um, to learning, we think. Um, so we'd just like to know what you think now as well. Oh, like that baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> Oh, did you, is it Jenny? Jenny, do you have a question? Hang on, hang on. No. Stevie, no. Stevie. 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 I just couldn't see the name then. Stevie, have you got a question? My hand is still up from when I volunteered, but I will happily ask a question. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> see, I'm just volunteering for everything, aren't I? Clearly. But um, no, it sounds really, really good. And actually, um, I think you're absolutely right about that idea that when everything everyone thought of delivering remotely everyone thought okay it must be something that they can see or interact with mm -hmm. and actually I really like listening to podcasts because you can literally have a lie down or lie on the sofa and just let it like wash over you and I think sometimes I think we all need something that is a little bit different and um, you talked about guest speakers but just because we're at the same institution would we ever consider possibly getting members of the public to engage with your podcast and personal experience. Yes, I like the nodding head syndrome. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I've already it. posed that question on the chat, but I think, and as you say, it's a great, it's a different way of engaging people. We've done it before in terms of um, having, you know, you must always have different guest speakers on modules and teaching and learning. So I think it's a great, you know, a nice different way, like you say, listening rather than watching or, you know, typing so I think it, it lends itself really well to um, public engagement doesn't it? Absolutely and, and it incorporates different ways of learning as well doesn't it you know I'm very much an audio learner um, so it, I mean it's, it's a really really valuable thing I think. And also it's a good medium for having discussions you know listening to people talking together um, do you have do you have shared discussions between you? Sorry if I missed that, or is it just one by one, individual? No shared shared discussions. Shared discussions. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, just as we would naturally probably be yeah. talking about uh, our experiences and, and bringing those in, and yeah, so mm. there was a little bit of structure with questions, but not much. We had four questions. That was it, mm. <laughs> and very often didn't get to ask them because they just it just moved on. Yeah, great. I think someone asked a question yeah. while talking about um, the editing, but I d I, did you answer that, Jane? I don't, I'm not I no, see. I, I actually don't know the answer to that because obviously my husband did it, and that's his job. Yeah. So I just, I just sent him the podcast and, and let him do the magic. Yeah. Um, but like Nikki said, moving forward, obviously he has a full time job, so <laughs> so he tells. Me. So I can't I can't really ask him to do these all the time for yeah. me. Um, so that's where we would need to explore this with Emma. <laughs> and I'm looking at Emma now on the screen um, at what the other alternatives are. Maybe there's apps and things like that that we can use. Um, a really, really good point. Actually, I think Chris has asked about deaf students and whether we've provided a transcript. And actually, the answer to that is no, we haven't. So that is definitely something and probably because we knew our students um, and we knew that that wouldn't be applicable to them. But certainly moving forward, we will absolutely do that. And on the bigger yeah. modules where we have yeah. hundreds yeah. of students that, that we would have to, obviously, that we don't know, we would have to provide that. So, yeah, very important point. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and asking which programme we use to record, we actually just recorded via Teams, but there are um, apps that you can use which will make the um, audio much, much better. We did try using that on the second one, um, and unfortunately I deleted mine, so we couldn't use it. But definitely next time we would use that because the audio was so much clearer. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. 
Yeah, so I am um, just to come in in terms of the the potential platforms that you might use. Something like Anchor FM might be something that you can quickly get to grips with because you can quickly record and edit the audio and it'll host it there as well. So you can embed directly into your VLE from there. There's lots of other um, kind of platforms available, but Anchor FM seems to be the one of the most common ones. If anybody else that's here knows about um, any other platforms, please do put them in the chat and we'll go we'll go explore them. Um,